Ask Reddit by Wolaine13. What actor or actress stupidly left a movie franchise or TV series thinking they were too good for it, only to be never popular again? George Lazenby has to be the top answer. Dude with zero acting experience lands the role of James Bond after Sean Connery, and was offered a multi-film deal to be Bond for the foreseeable future. Then, his agent just totally misguides him, telling him both that it's the summer of love and nobody is going to keep wanting to see spy movies about killing people, but also that since he'd already appeared in a film, he could ask for whatever he wanted and they couldn't turn him down. They brought Connery back for a film instead and Lazenby's acting career basically ended on the spot. Yeah but Lazenby also hated how much the studios tried to dictate his life during and outside shooting. He didn't embody the Bond visage in his day to day life. Not to mention Peter Hunt basically used and abused him during filming for the first one. Like straight up said we could kill him, in a stunt, and replace him tomorrow if needed. I like to think even if Lazenby would have continued he would have left for the same reasons Connery left in the first place. Chuck Woolery left Wheel of Fortune only to see Pat Sajak host it for over 40 years. And Pat Sajak only works, worked, like 4 days every 2 months. What a dream job. Several of the actors of MASH left early to make it big, none of them really did. Radar left and did a lot of stage work. I assume he never really needed to work again after 8 years on MASH. The only person who really seemed to have a career after MASH was Hawkeye. Crystal Reed from Teen Wolf. She was so certain she was done she had them kill off her character only for her career to flop outside of Teen Wolf and 10 years later would come back and have them revive her character for the movie. Part of the reason she wanted to do other roles was because she wanted to play a more age-appropriate character. She admitted she felt weird playing a 16-year-old when she's nearing 30. You left Melrose Place to do a movie with Carrot Top? Chairman of the BORED. Rip Norm. Calculan. My ex-girlfriend was on a soap but as a regular extra. They were starting to give her speaking roles, got her SAG card, etc. Once she got her SAG, she demanded more speaking roles or she was leaving. She never got another role after that. Happened to a friend of mine 25 years ago in Los Angeles. She had a recurring role on a hit network sitcom, but it was a dumb show and she wanted to be taken seriously, so she quit just as she was getting noticed. Never got another good role quit acting a few years later and moved to Las Vegas to run a pilot studio. Brian Dunkelman was co-host of season 1 of American Idol with Seacrest, and then quit. Over the years it has toggled back and forth between whether or not he would have been fired anyway, but in at least one interview he admitted to quitting and then almost becoming suicidal over it. I remember he went on Howard Stern right after he quit and Howard bluntly asked him what TF he was thinking and telling him he was an absolute idiot for leaving. Howard was right. Marcus Chong was Tank in The Matrix. Main character in a huge franchise. He had all of these big ideas about how the movie should be done and how his character should progress. That's fine, but he wouldn't stop pushing them on the directors and producers. When it came time to make Matrix 2 he was not invited back. Dude could have literally just shut up, been cool and thankful, and made huge bank and a bigger career. I don't know if the following is true, but I seem to recall him asking for 1 million dollars per film to return for the sequels because Tank was such an integral character, in Marcus' opinion. Then the studio said fuck that, hired Harold Perrineau, and killed Tank off via a couple lines of dialogue. Katie Holmes took a pass on The Dark Knight to go be in a movie called Mad Money, and like you, I haven't seen it either. My stepmother has some odd relation to Katie Holmes like third cousin twice removed kind of shit. Won't shut up about it. Calls it her claim to fame. I keep asking her what Katie has been in and she can't answer, lol. Edit, had no idea thousands of people would find my stepmother's odd relation to Katie Holmes so interesting. Like, half the cast of Downton Abbey. 
Jessica Brown Finley was one of the first people I thought of. She's done a few things since she left, but none of them seem bigger to me than Downton Abbey did. Ja Rule was in the first Fast and Furious movie. I like how Ludacris was in the second one as basically a cameo and then went on to become a major part in the franchise. Ed Screen left Game of Thrones as Dario Naharis thinking that if he starred in the reboot of The Transporter it would spawn sequels. That one still kinda blows my mind. I know there's a difference between being the lead role and playing second third fiddle, but he left God after season 3 pretty much right as it crossed into cultural phenomenon status, playing a character that was pretty much guaranteed to have screen time and not be killed for at least a few more seasons. Definitely a scenario where patients would have benefited. David Caruso leaving NYPD Blue, and Shelley Long leaving Cheers are good examples. They even did an inside joke on the show while at a drive-in movie. Cliff and Norm make note that one of the original actresses in the Godzilla films was replaced by another female actress, and left halfway through the series. I don't understand. Wonders would he. Why would an actress leave right in the middle of a successful series? Late to the party but Stuart Townsend was the original casting for Aragorn and the LOTR movies, but during pre-production and rehearsals he refused to practice things like swordplay, horse riding, action choreography etc, always responding you'll get it on the day. Peter Jackson decided he couldn't work with him. Vigo is brought in literally on the first day of shooting and the rest is history. Thank Vigo's son Alex for pushing him to take the role. His son is a huge LOTR fan and thought it would be cool for his dad to play Aragorn. He pretty much did it for his son. Mornich but Michael Shanks leaving Stargate SG-1 only to come back a season later buff as hell. I think he expected to get more roles but at least they let him come back from the dead. Shanks didn't like the progression of his character. Same reason Tori Higginson left Stargate. The studio execs were not very accommodating to Shanks because they thought no one liked him I like the quote was something like people like him we thought people only watch this show for RDA. All this did was piss off the fan base. So after a year everyone came to their senses and got back on track. And yay, he was more buff than RDA lol. Chad Michael Murray on One Tree Hill. He was in a Cinderella story with Hilary Duff too. Love that movie lol. Valerie Harper left her show Valerie and they replaced her with Sandy Duncan. That show is where I first saw Jason Bateman as a kid. Not an answer but an interesting side note. Matt Damon turned down the lead role in Avatar. James Cameron wanted him so badly he offered him 10% of profits but Damon still said no. Film made billions, losing Matt Damon around $250 million. Matt Damon has addressed this in interviews. He said that he liked the role, but that he needed to be available for post-prod for bone supremacy and the schedules conflicted. But he also said that in doing so he thinks that he turned down more money than anyone else he knows lol. Leo DiCaprio almost missed out on Titanic because he didn't read four parts. James Cameron said something along the lines of, Okay. Thanks for coming in. Leo responded along the lines of, Wait. If I don't read I don't get the part and Cameron explained he'd be working on the film and post for several years after Leo was done filming and he wasn't going to take the risk of casting the wrong person just because he was popular. Not quite your question but I found it interesting. Leo's career could have been derailed if he didn't immediately humble himself to a screen chemistry read with Kate. Yes, Kate Winslet had a reading with Matthew McConaughey as Jack before Leo's role was finalized. Nina Dobrev left The Vampire Diaries and Megan Boone left The Blacklist and I haven't seen either of them in much since. I'm so puzzled by Nina Dobrev. I'm sure she had her share of scripts offers, but she's not really been in anything. McLean Stevenson from MASH. Edited for format. Another one I was coming to add. After a string of high-profile flops, 
Stevenson famously lamented, I thought people loved McLean Stevenson. Turned out they loved Henry Blake. Lacey Chabot left Family Guy and was replaced by Myla Kunis who has made bank between new episodes and syndication. She sounds like someone who's about to give up a huge opportunity. Remember when Katherine Heigl was nominated for an Emmy, and she withdrew herself from the nominees because she felt the writing hadn't been good enough. I feel like her career never recovered from that. She also went on to say she didn't like the film Knocked Up which she starred in. I think talking shit about projects you're involved in is a really good way to burn your bridges. I don't know anything about that world, but if the writing is terrible and you still act your way to an Emmy nomination, isn't that just further support for your acting ability? Why not accept the nomination, potentially win the award, and then use that as bargaining leverage for the change you want? This is all bizarre to me. Jessica Ring from Call the Midwife Man I love this show and on rewatches I'm like damn did she really leave so soon after that the show turns into a bit of a revolving door sitcom but they do it well. I'm just continually surprised that sister Monica Joan is always still their lol lover. Not exactly the same as your question but Sean Connery turned down the role of Gandalf for 30 million dollars plus 15% of profits which would have got him about 450 million dollars. He said he didn't understand the script. So next time he was offered a script he didn't understand, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, he took it, ended up so disappointed in the product that he retired from acting. The man who starred in Zardoz didn't understand the Lord of the Rings? Really? Terence Howard was in Iron Man 1 and was going to become War Machine. This was the very start of the Marvel movies, the MCU. He got bounced I think for asking for crazy money. Don Cheadle replaced him for Iron Man 2 and all the movies beyond. Next time, baby. I don't think so. Look it's me, I'm here, deal with it. Let's move on Don Cheadle. From the HBO series Girls, the boyfriend of William's character left abruptly because his agents told him he had to capitalize on the popularity of the show before it ebbed. I don't even remember his name. Adam Driver on the other hand, stuck it out because he has incredible work ethic and loyalty to the projects he starts, and we all know how that turned out. Is that the guy who came back for an episode where he was a homeless junkie? Katie Holmes dropping out of Batman to do a bomb called Mad Money. With Nicole Kidman. The ex-wives of Tom Cruise. Edit, Nicole Kidman was not in Mad Money. My mistake. Katie Holmes turned down a lead in Orange is the New Black, 